Hello and welcome. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are continuing looking at the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. As we open your word today, we pray that you would open our hearts. May we hear your word as you speak to us today. May your word, Lord, bring us a renewed faith in you, a renewed trust in you, as we realize that you provide for all of our needs. We ask your blessing and we thank you that your word that goes forth from your mouth never returns to you empty, but it achieves the purposes for which you sent it. So we're now asking your blessing in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. My beloved friends in the Lord, there's nothing nicer than just freshly baked bread. As you know, I love to bake. And on the days that I bake my sourdough, be it focaccia or bagels or just white bread or rye bread. If Linda is working from home, especially if it's fruit bread, she starts circling around going, is it ready yet? Because the smells are wafting up from the kitchen to her study. And she comes down and says, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Because there's nothing better than nice, warm, freshly baked, crusty bread. Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Bread is an essential part of life. Back when the children of Israel were led by God out into the wilderness, out of Egypt from their slavery, one of the most important lessons that God was teaching them in the wilderness over those 40 years was that He is able to provide for all of their needs. They had to trust in Him daily for their food. For their daily bread. They were out in the wilderness. There was nothing much to eat. Water was scarce. They needed God's provision for them and God provided for them every day. There was a time when they whinged to God and said we want to eat some meat so God sent some quails and then after that he fed them with manna. We read from Exodus. So it came about at evening that the quails came up and covered the camp and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp when the layer of dew evaporated behold on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flake like thing fine as frost on the ground when the sons of Israel saw it they said to one another what is it for they did not know what it was and Moses said to them it is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat this is what the Lord has commanded Gather of it every man as much as he should eat. You shall take an omer apiece according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. The sons of Israel did so, and some gathered much and some little. When they measured it with an omer, he who had gathered much had no excess, and he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man gathered as much as he should eat. Moses said to them, Let no man leave any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it until morning. And it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was very angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat. But when the sun grew hot, it would melt. So this is the way that God provided for the children of Israel. He was teaching them that they need to trust in Him for their daily bread every single day. And no matter how much they gathered, each person had just sufficient, had the right amount that God had prescribed for every day. No one had more and no one had less. And he was also teaching them to trust in him every day, that every morning he would provide the manna from heaven. He told them not to gather more, not to have any left over, not to save any just in case. Some, of course, didn't listen. And by the morning it had become very foul and it bred worms, and then that's the way that God taught them. Now the reason some of them maybe gathered more and thought, well, I'll just leave some or reserve some for the morning, was that maybe they were lazy or maybe they didn't trust God. But God was teaching them to trust in Him every day. 
The only exception was on the Friday leading up to the Sabbath. God told them to gather twice as much so they wouldn't have to go out on the Sabbath. And that particular bread, that particular manna didn't go foul and didn't go off because again God was providing for them and making sure that they did have their Sabbath rest and that they wouldn't go out on the day of the Sabbath to do any work. Of course, there were those who, again, didn't listen, went out on the Sabbath, and they found nothing. And this was the way that God was training them to daily trust in Him for provision. God wants us to trust in Him. God wants us to obey Him if He gives us guidelines and rules and tells us to do something, then we need to do it. He wants us to trust in Him for everything that we need. And that's why Jesus, in teaching the Lord's Prayer, taught, pray, give us this day our daily bread. To trust in God every day for the things that we need. Again, it's helpful for us to have a look and see what Martin Luther says about this particular petition in his small catechism. Luther writes, God gives daily bread even without our prayer to all wicked men. But we pray in this petition that he would lead us to know it and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Everything that belongs to the support and wants of the body, such as meat, drink, clothing, shoes, house, homestead, field, cattle, money, goods, a pious spouse, pious children, pious servants, pious and faithful magistrates, good government, good weather, peace, health, discipline, honour, good friends, faithful neighbours, and the like. So here again, Luther very correctly says that God provides daily bread. He provides for the needs of people, whether they are good or whether they are wicked whether they believe in him or they don't. But when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are giving thanks to God and we are showing him that we trust in him to provide everything that we need. So Luther is teaching us that this petition, give us this day our daily bread, covers absolutely everything that we need in life. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking God to provide for all of our needs and we are giving thanks to Him for everything that He provides for us. God gives and we are blessed when we understand that and when we receive everything from Him with an attitude of gratitude. Knowing that God provides for us, we need to learn to stop worrying. We need to trust in Him. It doesn't mean that we don't do anything. We still need to do our work. We don't just sit back and ask God to rain manna down from heaven. That's not how it works. But we don't also need to be stressed and to worry about where our next meal is going to come from. God will provide. He provides in many different ways. Jesus taught this in the Sermon on the Mount when He said that, Look at the lilies of the field. Look at the birds of the year. God provides for them and he says, how much more are you worth than the lilies of the field or the birds of the year? And then he taught us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto us. This is the way to live life. This is, my friends, the most blessed life, the most freedom that we can have. Every day to come to God, to trust in Him, to obey Him, and to know that He provides for all of our needs. Every morning we should be thanking Him for His incredible grace, for His amazing grace, for His forgiveness, for His love. Every day we should be thanking Him for the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us. Throughout the day, we should take moments to just stop and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you provide for me. Thank you that you are with me always. I cannot (laughs) underline this point or stress this point enough. Gratitude, gratitude, giving of thanks is the most important thing that we can do. When we give God thanks on a regular basis, it frees us up. It helps us to live life above the normal. It helps us... 
because it strengthens our faith. It builds our relationship with Him. An attitude of gratitude. That is what all of us need. The more we give thanks to God, the stronger our faith becomes. We read in Isaiah, one of my favorite passages from Isaiah 40, 28 to 30. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Do you not know the everlasting God, the creator, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? He's never tired. He is always awake. He is always with us. He is always watching over us. He has promised to provide for us. The apostle Paul wrote, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. What a wonderful God we have. It doesn't say that he's going to provide everything that we desire. No. It says he will provide for all of our needs. God knows exactly what he needs. He knew what the children of Israel needed as they wandered through the wilderness. He provided for them. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their sandals didn't wear out. They had food. They had water. God provided for their needs. God provides for all of our needs and so much more. He really does give us so much more. He gives us so much because he loves us. He's a loving heavenly father who loves to lavish his love upon us. David wrote it so beautifully in Psalm 23. I know you know this psalm, but let me read it again in this context. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside, beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are really submitting to God and saying, Lord, I am trusting in you that you will provide for all of my needs. I love you. I thank you. I bless you. Take time today and every day to thank God for his wonderful, amazing love and grace, for his provision, for the fact that he is with you always and that you can say if you're a Christian, you can say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, in those moments when the sun goes behind the clouds, it gets dark. Storms roll in. You are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You need to fear no evil, for God is with you. Your good shepherd is with you. His rod and your, his staff are comforting you all the way. So let's give thanks to God. Give us this day our daily bread. We praise, thank, worship, and bless him that he always does. May God bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so very much. We thank you that you have provided everything we need, everything we need for our body, everything we need for our soul and spirit. You have provided for our eternity. You have left nothing out. We thank you, Lord, that you are over all things. We thank you that you, the creator of the earth, are with us always. Thank you, Lord. We bless, praise, worship, and thank you. As it says in the Psalms, we come through your gates with thanksgiving into your courts with praise. We bring you honor, glory, praise, thanksgiving. We love you, Lord. We thank you that you love us. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for our sins. You died that we may have life. What a wonderful God you are. 
We love you, bless you, praise you and worship you. We submit in you today to you and we pray give us this day our daily bread. We thank you that you do. We thank you that we can say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We thank you Lord that we know that we have everything that we need. We have your wonderful promise that you provide for all of our needs. We have the promise that if we trust in you and come to you, you renew our strength. We thank you Lord that you give us the air that we breathe. So we bless, praise and worship you. We pray for that soul that doesn't know this yet, who has not yet turned to you. Lord, that is just living off your graciousness and your grace and mercy, but doesn't thank you. We pray for them, Lord, that they would turn to you today, that this would be the day their hearts open to you. As your word directs, we pray for our government and all in authority. We pray, Lord, for those who um, are in positions of power, that you would help them to be honest and faithful. and to. So we pray for good government, Lord. We pray for good government. We pray for those who are suffering under bad governments. We pray, Lord, for your mercy. We pray for those who are suffering in the Ukraine. We pray for those, Lord, who have lost so very much. We pray for an end to this war. We pray for peace. We ask, Lord, that you would just defeat the enemy, that he would go home broken and defeated. We pray, Lord, for those suffering in Pakistan, where there's horrible, devastating floods, and all the problems associated with that, we pray for your mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the dying. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for those who are in despair, for those who see no purpose in life. We pray, Lord, for our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We pray, Lord, that you would protect them from evil. We pray, Lord, that you would just encompass us all with your love and that we would, you already do, but we just ask, Lord, that we would realize that and, and be open to that always, to the leading of your Holy Spirit. So we just ask that you take us by the hand, that you lead us and guide us. I pray for everyone that's listening to this message, Lord, that you would just touch their hearts and that they would know that you love them and that you provide for all of their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray for the church. We pray that you would bless her and keep her, cleanse her, renew her, and strengthen her. So we commit all to you now, Lord, and we pray together that prayer that you have given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.